are screenplay contests worthwhile? Which ones should I apply to and why? Should I take contest notes seriously if it seems the reader just had an off day? I'm kind of going off on a tangent with that one, <laughs> but we I get that a lot. So, I mean, the first question really, are screenplay contests worthwhile? Across the board, yes. Is every single screenplay contest worth your time to submit? No, because there are going to be some duds. There are going to be some that just don't get, get you the traction that you need. Um, I'm not going to point out some of them, but uh, you know, across the board in general, it's good to get your material tested, whether it's a teeny little kind of film festival screenplay contest just to see how it does there and then compare it to a huge submission uh, contest like Austin, where they get like 15,000 submissions, which still blows my mind. Um, they're worthwhile to just test the material. I think the problems come up when, again, going back to this taking it personally approach, writers have themselves connected so much to the script that if they don't get it, the, if the script doesn't go through the quarterfinals or if they don't even make uh, the, the quarterfinals, the writer, him or herself, they're taking this on like, oh, I didn't do it. We got to stop that thought process because it's not you. They're, they're not looking at a bio of you <laughs> and going, oh, I don't like that person or whatever. You know, they, they, they're a talentless hack or they're not saying that. They're judging the screenplay. So we have to be able to differentiate. Um, so from a basic level, they're absolutely worthwhile. But, you know, caveats here, it's it becomes very expensive after a while submitting to all these contests. So you have to be careful. You have to budget you know, just all this whole submission process, know what you're going to spend, plan it out. When are the deadlines? When did these become, uh, or when did the contest release their winners or the notifications of who placed, put a calendar together and go, okay, it, you know, these three contests, I've done a ton of research, which by the way, Google is usable. <laughs> you can just Google the contest and, and you'll see either reviews or news articles about them. Or if you know, if you can't find anything about the contest, then, you know, you make a decision whether or not you want to submit to that. Um, the ISA contests, I will say, and of course, this is a little bit of a sales pitch, um, are extremely worthwhile. And I know this personally because I work with the people who are managing those contests and they do not take them for granted. All of the readers, are, they go through the ringer when it comes to their, you know, training, um, and their education about how to write the notes or at least how to consider the scripts that come through. Um, our contest administrator is so detailed in how he manages the, you know, the spreadsheets and the, it's, it's a real thing. <laughs> so the ISA contests really do take them, take each contest seriously. So I, I would suggest looking to make sure the contest is from a reputable source. Um, have you heard of that organization before? Let's look up some reviews. You know, so you want to be a little careful um, and, and do your research. <clears throat> Which ones should I apply to and why? I kind of talked a little bit about that. In terms of contest notes, the hard truth is that, like I said in the question, should I take notes seriously if it seems the reader had an off day? And I'm kind of putting that nicely because I, I have received a lot of feedback not only from the writers that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, but just you know from the ISA membership in general, um, that sometimes the notes they get back from contests um, are bad, like they didn't even read the script. You know, I, I hear that a lot, which is a bummer. It's a huge bummer. I can guarantee you, the ISA contests do not do that. They take it seriously. Sometimes the the reader might have a little bit of an off day, and they're just not giving the type of detail or feedback that the writer may expect doesn't mean they don't care. It doesn't mean that they're just kind of, you know, whatever, I'm just going to write something up and, and I'm just going to earn my, my paycheck. You know, some contests sadly may do that. But be, the, Austin had a huge um, uh, um, kickback from some, uh, that process a couple of years ago. Um, and it was, you know, big news. And a lot of writers were very unhappy with some of the notes that came back from Austin and they righted the ship. Like they really took that seriously. And we're like, we are not going to have that happen again. Um, and so they're being, you know, very particular about how they approach that. So sometimes you get notes that just don't help. And here's the deal. Oh, well, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. Complaining about it isn't going to do doing any good writing to get some kind of you know refund back 
you know, maybe you get a refund, you might, you know, but it, how much time do you really need to spend on this? This is just how sometimes the industry works. Um, you may just not receive the type of notes that you were hoping. But I do suggest that when you're submitting to a contest and if you can afford it, try to pay for the feedback, regardless of what the contest might be, just so that you have, you know, you've spent your money wisely. Otherwise, when you're submitting to contests, it's just like playing a, a, the lottery, especially the ones where like Nickel or Austin or, or Page or uh, Blue Cat, um, some of those really big name contests receive a lot of submissions. So if you're fighting, oh, I shouldn't say fighting. If you're going up against 8,000 other writers and you're just spending the $50 or whatever it is to submit and you haven't really vetted the project all that much, you're playing the lottery and there's a chance that you just wasted $50. But if you spend 75 or 80 and you receive feedback, it's a pretty inexpensive way to get some notes. Sometimes the notes, they come back and you're like, well, Jesus, that didn't help at all. It's a bummer. But I don't know what else to say other than move on. You know, this is sometimes just how it goes. Believe me, once you get to a place where you're a professional writer and you're receiving notes from executives, from a, you know, a production company, a studio, sometimes those notes are dumb, just plain stupid. And you're just going to have to do your best with those notes. Sometimes those executives, not all, there are some extremely talented executives out there. Most of them are. But every now and then an executive is going to give you a stupid note. And you're like, what the heck do I even do with that? You then have to just rely on your experience to be able to apply the note as best you can.